Okay, so the um, the Blackmore Strat. Now this came from a a shop that's uh, a little bit closer to us than where we got the uh, Strat Acoustic from, and uh, I was I was also uh, <laughs> and I was also reminded by a zealous uh, owner of how much I'd actually uh, saved by the, uh, the discount he got me, almost to the point of embarrassment. So to save that sort of embarrassment in bargaining for a better price, I just prefer to, to go online these days and, and pick up things. Not that I'd do a lot of that. However, back, that's where it's come from. Back to the guitar itself. What did I have to do to this? Oh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is uh, put the uh, GK on, the Roland, and uh, give it a bit of a scrub on the back here with the 800. Uh, and that is about that. Can't think of anything else that I've done. Nothing else has been done to this. However, I thought it was quite funny. When reading some of the reviews on Musician's Friend about this guitar, one, one fellow said, that he thought it was a rip-off. <laughs> it's hard to say with a straight face. <laughs> he thought it was a rip-off because there was no middle pickup. And I suppose if you read, <laughs> if you read the, uh, the signature up the top, that shows you that it's like a tribute guitar. So why would they put a pickup where there was none in the original? And then someone might say, yeah, but it hasn't got the, the dork a uh, tone circuit. No, it hasn't got that. And what else it hasn't got is the jumbo frets. It's just got the standard frets. No, it hasn't got the door uh, tone circuit, hasn't got jumbo frets, hasn't got the same tuners, hasn't got the graduated uh, diminishing uh, pole uh, sizes as you head away from the nut. Uh, and there's probably a myriad of other things. It hasn't got the same scratches on it as the, as the original had, but uh, and it hasn't even got the same pickups, some people say. But you know, you can pull that stuff out and put the other in if you want. Put different frets in, you can get the dual tone uh, circuit and whack that in if you wanted. You can do all that sort of stuff. But um, so uh, my reason for getting it was to get an idea of how the scallops went as well, because I wanted to do the scalloping, which I've done with all the guitars now. So as I've mentioned in the scallop video, that's what it's for. Uh, like a template, but it's a very nice guitar to play as well. What I had trouble with initially, which took probably about eight or nine months really, the small headstock original white strat that I had, uh, had a, a really inboard string. It's probably come from not a, uh, a really good manufacturing process down in Mexico. But it was way in board, so it was really hard for your finger inadvertently to slip off that side of the fretboard with the string. Now this one was a lot closer. It came to the point where I've even got, if you can see here, I'll just put my spectacles on for a minute. If you can see down in under the, under the bridge there, if you can see down under the bridge, you'll notice that there's a sheet of aluminium that I've whacked under all the saddles and I've got holes uh, in there that keep the, um, the bridge saddles in, in position because what I found was happening initially was that this, this um, particular E, high E, was slipping off to the side and making the string way closer up here to the edge of the uh, fingerboard. So, so that basically arrested that and brought it back to a tolerable position. I just had to get used to really playing it in a normal setting rather than way inboard, which made it easy to basically bend both ways. So that is an alteration that I've done to it, this little uh, plate of very thin aluminium that is basically a cladding from the, uh, the house left over in the shed from the previous owners or the fellow who built the place. Um, and I did have that on a number of the guitars, but I found that if I didn't dig right through on each of the grub screws so that they could contact with the, um, the steel, 
that it, it seemed a little bit dull. Now I know <laughs> that might have just been in my imagination, but that's, that was what I thought. So I pulled it out of those and they're all pretty okay now. All right, so um, getting back to it. So in the playing, that's all I had to get used to was not slipping off. And if you're a keen observer of the videos, unfortunately, every now and again, <laughs> usually at a crucial moment, you'll hear uh, and see the finger go off the side. Anyway, you get that. Um, now, uh, otherwise for playing, it's quite quick. Obviously, you have to have your bridge a little bit higher because of this... Uh, um, rolling business here uh, so that you can clear this with the acceptable clearance uh, and other than that the tracking's not all that fantastic because it is a low action at the moment but I should take it up and put a heavier gauge string on it which I probably should use for all the guitars the next gauge up I use Diodario uh, on all my guitars because I just find they're amazing compared to some of the rubbish that came um, with other guitars. Oh, here's another thing. I had, uh, had a YouTube inquiry about why I do the, the twirl. Now we know where the twirl came from, don't we? <laughs> so I started doing that, like, oh, I don't know, back early, uh, late 70s. However, I found that it was beneficial for a poor bloke who didn't have a lot of strings, if one broke, and usually most of my string breakages happen here at the bridge, I could reuse the string, get the ball, retie it on, and reuse that string. Now that's something that's okay after a couple of weeks, um, but after a couple of months, you probably just change the whole lot, and that's what I tend to do. So, um, so and all I do here is just bend everything at a right angle, so that, um, there's very little slip, two or three winds on the actual post, and then just curl them around. It's no rocket science, but for anyone who's been asking about it, that's, uh, that's what uh, I do with this guitar. Now, oh, once again, just these pickups, they're amazing. The output of them is just nuts, really. Uh, the, the next step would be to find some lace sensor pickups and uh, bowl them into a guitar and see how they go because they, they sound fantastic. They're probably the best sound that I've heard, but it's just uh, a matter of grabbing two of them and finding the right capacitor and all that sort of thing to put in there. So that's the uh, Mr. Blackmore Strat. Uh, it doesn't get used that much these days, but uh, it probably will need a fret job because uh, these frets have had one <laughs> one hammering in the last four or five years since I've had it. So I'd certainly recommend them to anyone, any of these guitars. Uh, and you can pick these up on uh, Stratosphere too, in bits and pieces. But you might find that they're not far off retail uh, in the States anyway. So, um, so there you have it. There's the Blackmore. And um, if you want to know anything about any of the other guitars or any of the other equipment, uh, just let us know.